Florence, millions of people now in its path. The latest track on where this monster storm will likely make landfall. Mandatory evacuations. We talked to a family headed to Ohio to escape Florence, plus how people are scrambling to rebook flights in order to steer clear of this dangerous storm. Dennis Michael Cook. Helen D. Cook. Never forget remembering 9-11 and lives lost in terrorist attacks 17 years ago. See how one local community came together to honor the fallen. As Hurricane Florence barrels toward the Carolinas, more than 5 million people on the East Coast are under a hurricane warning or a watch. More than 1 million of those ordered to evacuate. Good evening. I'm Lena Lai in for Sarah. And I'm Russ Mitchell. As people try to leave, some gas stations are already out of gas. And in many cases, store shelves are empty. Tonight, we have team coverage. Chris Ty talks to a couple heading to Cleveland from the coast, plus how it's already impacting flights across the country. But first, the chief, Betsy Kling, shows us where Florence is right now. Hi, Betsy. Florence is still well away from the U.S. mainland, but it is moving to the west. And as it's moving to the west, for now, it's picking up a little bit of speed. Let's take a look at the latest on the satellite. This is a different color table than you're used to seeing. Basically, we are highlighting where the strongest storms are in this, and that would be right around the center of the storm. This is the eye of the storm. There's those strong storms in that white. We're seeing more symmetry. That is a sign of strengthening when you get this nice circular pattern going on. Earlier tonight, it was a little bit lopsided, so it's starting to show more signs of strengthening. And this could peak at very close to a Category 5 later on tomorrow. Florence is sitting here well to the east of the East Coast. Meanwhile, there is a tropical disturbance that's about to make its way into the Gulf of Mexico. There's Isaac, which is a tropical storm headed for the Windward Islands. And Helene is a heck of a hurricane, but it's out in the middle of nowhere and not expected to impact anyone. So we get the latest on Florence. The storm is currently at 140 miles per hour maximum sustained winds moving to the west northwest at 17. The track of the storm is expected to change. This is a big update from the National Hurricane Center this evening coming on shore Thursday night into early Friday and then coming a little bit to the due west as it meanders inland. It's going to be moving very slowly and as it does so it's going to be absolutely dumping rain all across areas of the southeast. Now rain potential is all based on the track of the storm and as you can see everything lines it up nicely offshore but then the lines start to spread out that's showing uncertainty in the track and just very quickly let me show you what that could mean look at the yellow difference between one and two a huge change in how much rain falls over how much of an area just a small track shift we'll talk more about this what it could mean for our weekend and next week coming up all right, see you again in a bit, Betsy. Our team coverage continues now with Chris Ty. And Chris, this storm is causing travel problems for people who have vacation plans. That's right. Those who are there for business or for pleasure, traffic heading out of coastal Carolina cities is building as the evacuations continue tonight. We talked to one family heading home to their native Cleveland after boarding up their business and opting for safety over a roll of the dice. The last time North Carolina got walloped, 2016's Hurricane Matthew. Storm chasers Heather and Rob Williams, originally from North Ridgeville, moved to Wilmington, North Carolina seven years ago to open a dive shop. They buckled in and watched Matthew come ashore. That was then. We're not even going five miles an hour. This time? Evacuation is absolutely necessary. As we speak, they and their three kids are driving to Cleveland after boarding up the surf shop and heeding the warnings of Florence. Storms really don't shy us away, but this one feels different. As the storm churns, travel agents scrambling. Mel, have we had any other cancellations that in the last two days? I know Bill Coyle of Encompass the World Travel says people on vacation from as far away as Hawaii coming home early to avoid the trickle-down effects of flight cancellations. They're coming home a day early so that they don't get stranded. United, American, and Delta are issuing waivers to get a full refund or change your flight. He suggests travel insurance, especially during hurricane season. For the Cleveland-bound Williams family, there's no such policy for a life change that could await them. We packed up the necessary documents, the things that we really needed in case we are unable to return.
And air travelers are rerouting around Charlotte in the southeast to avoid these headaches, while airlines are offering, as we mentioned, relief for this act of nature. For vacationers who have hotels and rental cars and excursions awaiting them, those businesses may be less generous with those refunds. Live in the newsroom, Chris Ty, Channel 3 News. Thanks, Chris. This morning, Ohio Task Force 1 hit the road. They are headed to North Carolina to help with Hurricane Florence. They're made up of 16 members who will help with the search and rescue in areas hardest hit by the hurricane. The team consists of several types of specialists, including water rescue squad officers, logistics specialists, and medics. Later in the newscast, we take you to Wrightsville Beach in North Carolina. We'll get a first-hand look into how they are preparing for what could be one of the strongest hurricanes they have seen in decades. Here's what else is happening tonight. Several communities in Tomorrow, we really are in kind of a nice pattern right now, okay? Mostly cloudy skies to start, not as damp in the morning. Temps in the 60s will be in the 70s for the afternoon and the evening. Clouds and sun, it's actually going to be a pleasant day. So don't worry about tomorrow here in Northeast Ohio. We have no weather woes coming anytime soon. As a matter of fact, we wouldn't even have to worry about rain coming into the forecast until we get into some pop-ups in the next couple days as some warmer air moves in. We've just seen a few clouds around, but all in all, all this very kind of quiet pattern that we are in is related to how the hurricane is going to move. Now, I know that's kind of a stretch, but let me show you what's going on. We have high pressure in the mid and upper part of the atmosphere here over the eastern half of the country. There's also high pressure sitting out here in the Atlantic, known as the Bermuda High. The storm has been following along the wind path around the Bermuda High, so it's got a nice push behind it, and that's helping to propel the storm to the west. As I said, it's moving west-northwest at 17. Meanwhile, this high that is sitting over the eastern half of the country is spinning the mid and upper part of the atmosphere in a clockwise fashion. So as this strengthens, as the storm gets closer, it's going to help to put the brakes on that forward movement. The degree to the braking is all dependent upon timing and strength. And at this point in time, we are not able to put those two together with any kind of accuracy. So when I showed you before, this is known as a spaghetti plot. This is basically the forecast models showing you where the eye of the storm will be tracking. And you can see there's pretty good conditions consensus, good agreement, all the way up to North Carolina, and then things start to stop. Some of the models are now putting the brakes on the storm just offshore. Some are putting the brakes on when it's onshore, and others are just letting it roll on in. So as far as what's going to happen right now, there is a definitive shift farther to the south that would open up South Carolina to more of the devastating impacts of this storm. So as I showed you before, the kind of side-by-side -side comparison, Model 1 is where things happen have been trending, which puts all of the extremely heavy inland rain, which I think is going to be the most devastating part of this whole storm, that throughout North Carolina and Southern Virginia. But on the new potential track, look how much more this opens up, clear down into the Atlanta area. So not just into North Carolina, they're pretty much assured some bad impacts, but now South Carolina and then as you get into portions of Georgia. Then you have to think about everything moving down after that and how that would impact our forecast. So as far as where the National Hurricane Center things are, believes things will go, they kind of bring it a little bit farther to the west and inland. It's still going to be moving pretty slow, dumping rain as it does so. But then what happens after that? Well, at this point, you saw where the spaghetti plots go. They, they don't know. So we're going to get the storm on shore. We're going to see how things go in the next 48 hours. But right now, we have decided decided to move back the impacts of Florence in our forecast to Monday and Tuesday of next week. Yesterday we had it here for the weekend, so we're kind of pushing Florence back. Universal Windows seven day forecast for tomorrow, as I mentioned, beautiful day, 73, partly cloudy. Pop up storm chances Thursday, Friday as warmer air returns. We're going dry for the weekend now, and then Florence impacts with some rain coming Monday and Tuesday. All of that completely subject to change based on what that storm does. Mm. It's big. All right, Betsy.